on BBC Two. Skeptical journalist and the London International Church of Christ, face to face now on BBC Two. with his best friend Jesus, they're hanging out together. Peter says, I'll never deny you, I'll never disown you. Three times he denies Jesus. That's a failure. The power of the resurrection changed. The London Church of Christ's number one enemy is the media. Branded a dangerous and evil cult by the tabloids, they finally decided to fight back. Damien Thompson is a critic and journalist. He's preparing for a unique experience. One week living amongst them as a church member. And nearly forgot it. And indeed, it looks as if I've managed to sit on it. The Holy Bible. I should really have a zip up one. That's what they all have. All evangelical Christians have zip up Bibles because they, they use them so much. That goes in. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Andy B will be Damien's mentor. An LCC disciple, he lives with two other converts. We don't really convert anyone. Um, it's it's you know God will draw people to Him whose whose hearts are open and. If Damien's heart is open and his time is now and he's ready for it, well then, great. Um, we're definitely going to try. Now, all my friends have been saying that if I am not back in a week's time, they will come and get me. Um, because they've all got this word cult in their minds and they... they um, well, put it this way, you'd think I was going to Mars rather than Muswell Hill. Ooh. I have definitely got a slight sort of butterfly feeling. Please to meet you, mate. I'm Damien. Oh, yeah. Richard. You come this way, I'll show you. Hi, Damien. Hello there. I'm Andy. All right. Nice Hello. to meet you. Oh, it's sweet. And you spelled my name right. We did. With an A. Excellent. With an A, as opposed to an E, which is the satanic question. It wasn't me. <laughs> he said it. He said it. I thought I'd get it out of the way. OK, it's done now. I certainly hope you'll be very comfortable here. And I hope the week we spend together will be interesting bonding. And most of all, a lot of fun. That's really nice. And I hope that as well. Friday evening and the student devotional a mixture of fun and games and evangelism. Uh, James, what I need is uh, seven volunteers from the team on the right and Ooh. seven volunteers from the it's team It's meetings like this which have attracted the bad press. <laughs> <laughs> the church is accused of recruiting vulnerable young people and taking over their lives. <laughs> Brainwashing them into rejecting their family and friends. This is Mark Templer, the British leader with his wife, Nadine. For 15 years, he's tirelessly delivered their controversial message. And there was a day when my mom told me Dad's leaving. A message that has been banned really from many university from campuses. I remember that. That really made me bitter. It really changed me. We've got, I mean, I'm proud of Enno. You know, Enno was studying, and she, she, had, she had gotten a grant, and it wasn't right. And we're teaching her, you got to study the Bible. you got to love Jesus. And we find out that she's obtained her grant and it's not been right. You cannot be a Christian and claim to be a Christian and have a grant falsely obtained. That's right. That's right. And so she went and confessed to SOAS the, the truth of the matter. And what did they do? They kicked her out. But it was the right thing to do. Yeah. That's right. But now you could imagine studying the Bible with someone and seeing how that might upset them. Yeah. 
because she already was going to church and was already accepted as a Christian. Yeah. And yet her life was full of sin. There she is. She does feel good about herself. You know, when you become a disciple, there may be people in your family who think you've lost your mind. Why do they think that? Well, they love you. They suddenly see you totally committed. They're, your life changing. You're becoming different. And they're worried about you. And they say, stop this. And of course, your reaction is, no. And they think they really lost their mind. And they'll, they'll get emotional sometimes, or they'll put, lay down the law, you got to leave, you got to stop this. Yeah. Yeah. It had to take incredible self-control yeah. for Jesus Christ to stand up to his mother yeah. when she was upset. Yeah. you got to lose your life. And this is a pretty intense commitment level. <laughs> the cross is all about death. You can't water it down. It means dying to who you are and getting filled with Christ so we can be his ambassadors, change our colleges, change our city, change our countries, and change our world in this generation. Amen. 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 I've just come back from the first London Church of Christ service, which was a fascinating, disturbing, and quite exciting affair. I'm very, very impressed with Damien. He is, he's very intelligent, he's very astute, he's well read. He knows what he's talking about. He's seen a lot of things. One moment I was thinking, they're not so bad. These are nice kids. The next I was thinking, ugh, that's a bit creepy. Yuck, I can see why people don't like this group. And then back again. If you thought tonight was hardcore, you didn't do anything yet. This is John Partington, an elder in the church, and like Andy B, a devoted disciple. Quiet time a daily ritual for all church members. Thank you for all the promises that you make to us. Thank you for saying that nothing will go wrong. When, Lord, you took bodily form and you filthy yourself to take flesh, Father, and walk amongst your own creation, God. Father, thank you for Mark and Nadine. Pray that you'll uh, bless them, help them as they uh, bring up the children. You're ambassadors of Christ as if you, God himself, were making his appeal through us, God. And Lord, I pray that our hearts would be open, that you would make your appeal, Father, through us. Father, that you would, um, Father, come to us, lead us and guide us, Father, in your truth. Guide us in your word, Father. God of grace. Hi, guys. Hey, John. Come on in. How you doing? Good to see you, Andy. Great. Damien. Hi there. Good to see you. How do you do it? Like that. Okay. Damien is to have a series of Bible classes with JP as they would for potential converts. On the road to conversion, confession is essential. He says there's one. Damien is to be no exception. Same idea, one body. Uh, Ephesians 5, which actually lists sins. And so, uh, and it's at that point that we would talk specifically about our own lives. And Obviously, the sin study is not something you would do with somebody who's not interested or someone who you don't really have a, a built a, a relationship with. Because we talk about our own inadequacies, our own yeah. backgrounds. I'd, I'd like to stop you there and say that this, this um, sin study is something that gravely disturbs many Christians outside your denomination who feel that people who um, perhaps have not who, who perhaps have come into contact with you relatively recently, who may be um, impressionable, um, are being asked to talk about intensely private things to somebody who um, they, they don't know very well, but who is in a position to exercise a certain amount of spiritual authority over them, even though he or she um, may themselves not have been a member of your church for very long. So the sin list, as, as it tends to be called in the tabloids, is, um, is one of the major charges against your church, or rather what many Christians would consider the misapplication of biblical principles, a dangerous risk to take. I came down here, I was messed up, and nobody, nobody talked to me about the stuff. I wanted to unload. <laughs> I, want, I wanted somebody I could trust. 
You see, sin messes us up. I want to be a Christian. I want to be part of the one church that Jesus died for. Is someone who sleeps with his girlfriend and commits sexual immorality a part of that one and, and, and justifies that part of that one church? No. Am I arrogant and proud to say that? Call me that if you will. All right. But you see, I don't, I don't set the standard. Is somebody who smokes cigarettes part of the church? Is someone who goes on sinning and tries to justify his sin and does not give up, uh, is that right or is it wrong? I think it's wrong. But this is where people say they're barking. To me, it says an awful lot about Listen, where the boundaries the, the, lie. The, the principle is not cigarette smoking. The principle is following Jesus. You know that from our lives. We're not weird and we, we enjoy life. We, we, we do and we have fun. You know, we're not going to say, OK, we know you love alcohol, but just when you get drunk, all right, just take the day off church because if someone sees you, it's not going to look too good. No. Yes, yes, all right. We're going to say, don't get drunk. All right. We'll help you stay sober, but you've got to want to not stay sober, but follow Jesus. Yeah. A church which is likely to make a really big deal out of smoking cigarettes is also a church which is likely to come on, in individual cases, come on far too strong to vulnerable saying. people. You made the big deal about cigarettes. <laughs> Not us. Oh, I, I could have picked other examples, though. I really could have. <laughs> Adolescent masturbation, you know. Um, that, again, that's, this is it come back to the proportion thing. Well, tonight we're, uh, we're off out on a date. I'm, uh, I'm going out with a lovely young lady called Chi. Date tonight, it's called. Also known, apparently, as Nookie Night, rather daringly. Um, but not officially. And um, we're off tonight to a local bowling alley. And it's very much a church activity. Um, they relax with each other as well as praying and studying and everything but sleeping with each other. I like the guys. I think I like everybody I've met. To me, the, the idea of this isn't to convince Damien that we're actually, we're really nice blokes, because, I mean, we could have gone out with a drink for him one evening and showed him that we're really nice blokes without having to, to get out of this trouble. It's, it's, it's to show, I think, what Christian living is, is really about. And I hope he sees that, irrespective of his, uh, his preconceptions about the church. I do hope some of those are smashed. I hope all of them are smashed. Girls are really nice. They're really sweet and they're really witty, uh, which wasn't what I'd, I'd been expecting. I was expecting um, rather serious and rather demure and nervous girls, and they're a hoot, which is great. had a very interesting evening indeed. Very interesting day, perhaps. I really feel like things have, have gotten going now, and um, we're really in this, this is really happening. Um, go back from our, our date. I didn't make a complete pattern of myself bowling, and that was a nice surprise. Technique was a little unorthodox, shall we say, but his finishing was absolutely clinical. And then something happened, which was, um, for me, um, disturbing and creepy. 
um, which was that the, my date, Janet, a Northern Irish girl, Supergirl, um, went over to a, a Colombian couple, a young couple who were just out there, strangers, just there for a, just there for a drink, and started telling them about her church in a really rather persistent way, in, in just the sort of way that I've seen Moonies do in the past, you know. I can see this beginning to work now. I can actually see what we hoped would happen starting to happen. This is my church. It's great. It's really fun. Are you going to come? Why don't you come tomorrow? We've got a service. Here's a card. He is seeing our lives and what we do. It just reminded me that this is a serious, this is, a, for them, it's a, a deadly serious business. Even a trip to the bowling alley could be the door to salvation for somebody. What Damien needs is to talk about his heart, and um, that's what I want to see happen. And if that happens, if he talks about his heart, that then we can start to get to the core of who Damien is. Even in our faithlessness, Father, you remain faithful, Father, for a scripture says you cannot disown yourself. I've never seen the life as too intense. It is intense. Um, the Bible is intense. Christ's ministry was and is intense. Amen. Yes, you can sing. Yes, you can smile. Whatever you like. You're free from your bondage till 20 to 11. Thank you, everybody. This is the Sunday service, where faithful disciples bring in as many new recruits as they can. How many of you here have ever failed at something in your life? Okay, it's a vast majority of us. Get up. Stop feeling sorry for yourself. Stop being bitter. Don't be dismayed by failures. Make a decision. Maybe you're here today for the first time. Make a decision. I'm going to study the Bible. Yeah. I want to open up the Bible with these guys. I want to learn from them. You can tell if you've been here for a couple hours that we're sincere. Yeah. Sit down with someone and read the Bible. It'll burn in your heart and change your eternity. He wants us to be his witnesses, the yeah. witnesses of the real gospel, the chance to change, that God loves us individually. It's a love story that never ends. It's really true. Let's be determined to make a difference. Let's bring people to church. Let's decide I'll be devoted to Christ with all my heart for all my life until we change this world in our generation. God bless you. Amen. Yeah. Flat night. Once a week, church members have a meal together. Damien's investigating house rules. Uh, I'm going to it. Uh, a, a typical Sunday evening LCC dish, and uh, you know, very strict guidelines on what to cook on a Sunday. <laughs> strict evening. guidelines, I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this is a. Uh, it's all stipulated in, in the church. You find it there in the uh, in the books at head office, head mm. office in uh, LA or Boston. <laughs> These are King Edward spuds. Right. And we've added uh, a couple of teaspoons of uh, brainwashing powder right. and just a tad of um, spiritual uh, elitism as well. Okay. I mean, all in the spuds there. We've got about right. 20 minutes on there. Sounds good. Uh, do you have sort of, um, does the church give you guidelines on um, house rules? How to organize being flatmates? Uh, no, I think we're, we're reasonably intelligent enough to, um, we're intelligent enough to work out our own kind of, you know, House rules, I think. No, yeah. don't, we don't bother people with uh, these kind of trivial things. Bless us, O Lord, and these thy gifts which we are about to receive through thy bounty, through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 I'm beginning to get a sort of feel for the vocab. There's superb. I've heard no, uh, no. lots of people say that. And oh, I've heard people talk about being fired up. Hey, he was really fired up. There was yeah, his brother. He was really I fired tell, up. I'll tell you what that is. It's an American. Oh, that's right, everyone it's, attacked It's America. actually no. a capital radio, no. isn't it? It's, it's oh, isn't a capital it? radio, isn't it? Yeah, the, the disc jockeys say crank, cranking and fired up an awful lot. It's just... And crank up the baptisms, people say, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they man. do! Who says that? <laughs> All the Not ex-members me. say it. Rubbish, rubbish. Because Mark will be sort of going, hey, I'm telling quite a funny joke, aren't they? And then suddenly you'll go crazy! You'll go completely crazy and talk about hell! And then he'll grin again and tell a funny joke and, you know, People all speaking the same lingo, I'd say Absolutely. avoid them. Absolutely. If there's like 1,200 people yeah. speaking the same kind of yeah. weird slang, I'd, I'd, I'd run a mile. Yeah. Absolutely. Ask my wife! Got convicted about being open, got this little 
Uh, we call it a ladies Bible class. I know it's offensive terminology now, but ladies Bible class got them together. I'm so insecure, especially with women. I'm afraid of them. What does it take? It takes openness, number one. I've just got in and I come up the stairs and there's Pete doing the washing up. The more open I was, the more awesome people thought I was. And he's listening to this sort of horrific ranting noise of an American preacher. I'm telling them what a wretch I am and they're saying, you're so awesome. And the more wretched I made myself, the more people told me I was awesome. People said, you are awesome. That impregnable steel barrier has finally been penetrated. Um, he needs this. He needs to deal with who he is. There's a lot in there. Damien's last day and his final Bible class. He's feeling the strain a bit of it all as well. Um, but I don't want to let this one go. He, he started to get a bit vulnerable. Mark Templer, the church leader, is to take it. This is good. I, I want to find out about his past, especially the past four or five years, because I think we've hit on something here. It's the pivotal moment for new recruits. Will they die to themselves and live for God? They call it radical transformation, and now it's Damien's turn. Imagine, imagine being in a room yourself where everyone in the room had decided you were going to die. Not now, but tomorrow. Yeah. I mean, to me, that would be such a frightening experience, yes. the thought of dying tomorrow, Absolutely. being yeah. murdered. And they blindfold him, and then they start spitting on him, and they hit him, <laughs> slapping him, and they say, Prophesy, who hits you? You know, a little game they're playing. Yeah. Obviously, he can't see. Sure. They're saying, surely you know. Mm. And they're punching the Son of God. Mm. And why is he going through all this? Because of the times we've slandered people, the times we've been unjust, the times we've been afraid because of our sins, because he loves us. Pilate is remembered today as the man who helped to kill Jesus. He had a choice, though. And it's interesting for Jesus, he's flogged. I don't know if you've ever seen a flogging or maybe on film, but it must have been an incredible experience. They take off his shirt, they tied him, they took some kind of a, a whip made of leather, perhaps there were bits of bone or stone at the end, and they would start hitting him. And each time they'd hit him, his back would be torn, more and more skin would come off, blood would start oozing out. It'd be anguish. And they used to hit the prisoners to the point where they were near death, but not dead yet. It says, then the governor's soldiers, verse 27, took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered the whole company of soldiers around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, then twisted together a crown of thorns and set it on his head. Then they led him away to crucify him. They stretch him out on the ground and they take a nail and a long nail and they start hammering it through his wrist <laughs> and you know you can imagine the pain of having a nail going through your wrist and his hand must have been trembling and then they took his other hand and he can see what they're doing to him and they would lift the cross up and then suddenly drop it into the hole <laughs> and he'd be there hanging and as you hang on the cross you can't really breathe after a while. Your muscles start to contract. Yeah. So you pull on the nails. <laughs> and you lift yourself up, and you can breathe. But then you don't have the strength to hold yourself. <sighs> but then he starts choking again. <laughs> and he lifts himself up. And all day long, he's hanging there on the cross, going up and down. Why? Of course, because he loves you and me for our sins. Our drunkenness, drug abuse, selfishness, everything we've done wrong. You know, all the rapes, the murders, the lies, the, the garbage of this world. Jesus bore the guilt. You could imagine a scene, perhaps, in heaven. 
And Jesus sees the pain of sin and the pain of this world. And Jesus says, Father, I want to go help them. And God said, son, you don't understand. Sin must be punished. I've got to punish the sin of these people. Either I punish them or someone has to take it. If you go there, I'll punish you for their sins. Mark, where does this dialogue between Jesus and God come from? Nowhere. This is just a parable or a story that I'm creating that might illustrate the ideas we're presenting. Well, it makes me feel uncomfortable. OK, because that's fine. You're a, you're a biblical guy, mm. and it's not in the Bible. OK, I won't use it then. What is the response that we're supposed to have, according to verse 24, to our sins anyway? We die to our sins, is what it says. It's right, a death. You know, yeah. the old, the, you know, it talks in 2 Corinthians 5 about this transformation, the old you dying. This is yeah. why we believe the old us has yeah. to die. The old Mark must die. Yes. And a new Mark must live for yeah. what is right. Now, Mark, um, you do not have to persuade me that you believe that you are transformed in Christ. Mm. That's not something I have to be persuaded of. It clearly lies at the very center of your faith. And at this point, I would ask, up to now, who have you been living for? And at this point, you receive an evasive answer from me, because I think that's a very big question, um, whether this is the right place to discuss it, and you know, even whether you're the right person to discuss it with a big questions for me. I was pretty determined when I came here that I wasn't going to give anybody my phone number. And um, now, you know, I'd, I'd be really happy to give the guys in this house my phone number because I, I really feel I can trust them. They know I'm not a potential convert. They know exactly what I think. They know that I think and hope that they won't spend the rest of their lives in this particular outfit. I'm glad that he's decided he's going to leave his, his number and etc. with us. I don't think this is all going to end after this week. What's going to happen? Is Damien going to one day join the London Church of Christ? I don't know. But his life is not going to be the same after this. Why? Because Jesus died for you. He calls you to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. You've got to lay your heart out to others. And you this is a group which is all about converting people. But you know, when you I cannot people, possibly take offense if they try to convert me. And that's how the church is supposed to be, a group of people who love one another. What I think I do object to is, is when obviously manipulative techniques are used on fairly vulnerable people. And I think some of that does go on. I think Mark Templer's um, repertoire of, um, of tricks, if you like, is, is something which disturbs me. 100% committed. Let's take this message. Let's change our lives. Let's change the world. I love you. God bless you. Amen. Will Sparks fly as two disgusted mums spend a week on tour with Cradle of Filters? Uh, Rich.